Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brousseau. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy. I am your host, John Francis Fahey. Joining me as ever is, of course, the pinnacle and perfection of perversion, a man I will love until the day I die. You're going to like the way he looks. I Aaron Peet. Aaron Joseph Peter. <laughs> That's me, dude. What's up? I'm wearing my butt wiper, the king of mm, beers shirt. So cool. It's the holiday season. He's wearing a Budweiser shirt, which is the king of beers. That's that. Explained. Yes. <laughs> You're listening at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it is a wonderful sweatshirt. Thank you. It's comfortable. Uh, showing a very, um, uh, I would say, early 80s style Budweiser can. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we still have kind of the ridge of the can, so that looks like it's like, it's it's more like a can of soup, how they used to be, which is real, real throwback. Oh, yeah, where you used to have to, like, open it with a punch. You used to have to take, yeah. it, take it out to the garage. Yeah, yeah. Hit, it, hit it with a batter. Yeah, a jigsaw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, had to, you had to bring jigsaw to your house yeah. to get this I fucking want. thing open. You didn't, you didn't get a fucking engineer. Crack open a sixer. <laughs> I want to play a game. <laughs> I don't know what the jigsaw voice is. Yeah, he sounds like, he's like, he's like, I'm dying. He's like, oh, you mean the actual voice? Yeah, the guy. The, the guy. I guy. can't drink a beer through that weird ass mask. You know? <laughs> I like to drink with that puppet though. That guy's a riot. Yeah, yeah. circling around. Man, a free I, ride home. Don't don't let him get on that bike <laughs> <laughs> after three, four of these butt wipers. He'll fall into that tiny guy. He'll uh-huh. fall into that pile of needles. Yeah. Oh boy, he does that cool laugh. That yeah. <laughs> it is like that kind of laugh. He stole like, from Flipper. Yeah, very, very dolphin esque. Yeah. Stole from Lassie. Yeah, still out there saving people. <laughs> Did you ever watch Flipper? I, yeah, yeah, I did, and I I watched more Lassie, but I watched a lot yeah, of Flippers. They were both on, like uh, daytime, yeah, daytime, yeah, TV mm-hmm. before you got the good cartoons after school. Very much. You had fucking Andy Griffith. Boring. Yeah. And uh, well, you just didn't understand Small Town there. I still don't. It, I don't. <laughs> you you can't watch that in Small Town. No, I don't get it. Yeah, he's a metropolitan guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, what's this fucking Andy guy talking about over here? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the L.A. native. Yeah. Hey, that kid, he's the voice from Arrested Development, right? <laughs> uh, he's got that famous brother who looks weird. Um, <laughs> that is, um, then then they had, you know, your Lassies, and then your Flippers, mm-hmm. yep. which was just Lassie in, in the ocean. Lassie in the water. With, yeah. Uh, and in color, I believe, I wanna later see, I want to see Lassie get wet. Mm, Ooh, Jesus like Christ. Wet. And Lassie was a guy. All assies were guys. Is that true? Yeah. Wow. Huh. Weird. I Bad know. society back then. Man, well, you know. Uh, and then uh, start, uh, you had Gilligan's Island. That was usually on the same round. Never watched Gilligan's Island really? somehow. Yeah. Great show. Dukes of Hazard never got that never, one. Dukes was never on when I was a kid. Never saw the Waltons. John Boy comes from the Waltons. Yeah, never, never saw, watched that either. That saw. was just not on my local uh, or, or, program. Or, or on my Nick at Night. No, no. Huh. Anyway, that was a great discussion. Yes. End I, of show. End of show. That's it. That's the wrap. Um, gents. Um, and I'm Matt Brousseau. Oh. <laughs> Dude, that's <laughs> fucked up, Don. <laughs> Dude, fucked up. Can you believe that, man? Mistakes. Yeah. Mistake, I didn't want to say anything. Mistake, you, did say, you did say a lot. Yeah, you said plenty. <laughs> yeah, you oh, said a lot. I, I distracted you with my hot fucking la- flipper yeah, is made, the lassie you, of the ocean yes. cock. <laughs> Wasn't in the ocean. It was in a fucking pool or something. No, he wasn't. They were in Florida. Can we talk about Matt already? Matt. Hi. Right. Matt. Uh, what kind I'm, of lassie are you? Handsome uh, Matt Brousseau. Flipper was on right before my mom picked me up from daycare. Oh. So cool. I remember Flipper. Your mom picked you up, huh? Yeah. Well, I, I, <laughs> I lost my license. So. Yeah. Wow. Early. Yeah. Or late. <laughs> <laughs> oh, adult daycare. Yeah. You're like one of those adult health daycare centers you drive by. Like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Matt's in there. It's good. It's it, we, it, You need Matt's those in there for going some folks. Flippers You on. do. You yeah. do. But I just, where's that daddy daycare? I need to see that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I? Dude, I mean, you just went off about Flipper. You should love that shit. <laughs> I didn't like Flipper. I didn't like. I didn't like last. He, you did go off on it. You did go yeah, off on it. I'm either. reading them the Riot Act, dude. <laughs> Fuck that. Matt, I'm sorry. It's okay. It was rude. 
Um, Aaron distracted me. You know that with the whole flipper thing. Okay. He really got me. <laughs> you really got me. Uh, gentlemen. So Here we are. Uh-huh. Lovely to be here in the uh-huh. studio uh, afforded by the, the Patreon. Mm-hmm. Subscribers. $5 a month extra show per week. Mm-hmm. Handsome Joe Latchett was saying that the, the, the sound in here is real nice and bassy. Too. And you have to understand that he's right because he's handsome. He is. Oh, my God. I don't listen to people that don't look good. I don't know any. Yeah, because you don't uh, listen to them. I don't listen to them. I yeah. keep them out of my circle and go, ah! It's like that one person I briefly had a relationship with who told me, ugly on the outside, ugly on the inside. That's a crazy statement. And, and yeah, and they believed it. That's nuts. Yeah. Dude. Woo! Ooh, that's that yeah. awesome. Who yeah. is this person no, out you, them? You do not think they that's... did comedy, if you'll believe it. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. I don't know if they did comedy. They were on stage with the right. microphone. Got it. And they had opinions. Yeah. She's like, ugly people are actually evil. <laughs> yeah, that's the amazing part. I'm like, how do you look at people walking past, the, like on a crosswalk, without revving your engine at them? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, imagine showing that person the elephant man. <laughs> She's like, oh my God, he's what is- going to <laughs> rape her. <laughs> <laughs> he came straight from hell. Yeah. Yeah. That man that is the most evilest man to have ever lived. Yeah, he's got so no. many bodies on him. <laughs> Ted Bundy? Innocent. Good looking Look guy. Look at him. Look at him. Framed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Uh huh. We're here to talk about our friend Tito. Part two. Part two, baby. Tito Brawls. Tito Bros. Tito Bros. Joseph Bros. Tito Bros. We also we, down tonight. So I mean, you guys basically remember where we were at? Yeah, let's uh, well, give, let's give had, a little uh, bit of a refresher. Uh, we had a um, a monarchy in Yugoslavia, mm-hmm. um, and we had Tito there, in in, in basically the, the uh, reaching the ascendancy of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. Uh, we had some. We had some. Uh, he went to jail a bunch. A lot. A lot yeah. of jail, a lot yeah. of uh, World War One activity. Worked in a lot of machine shops. Yeah. <laughs> Learning a lot of languages. Uh-huh. A lot of rioting. Leaflets. Um, Once jumped off a train in Siberia. Yeah. Yeah. Stalin's in power now. He he, he evaded some, um, some power struggle stuff there, and... Um, then we we worked our way up to the outbreak of World War II, and that's where we are. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kick it off from now, there. Now, World War II is that one I should know? That one was a big one. Uh, hmm. They call it the big one. Uh, well, usually the sequels aren't <laughs> yeah. as good. Yeah, but yeah. this one is kind of like your Dark Knights, your yeah. Empire, Terminator, Terminator, Terminator Two, Two's. Judgment yeah. Day, of yeah. course. Yeah. Your uh, Jingle All the Way Two. Never Bert, saw it. Bert, 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 is that their second movie? I don't know. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. They did America the first time. Oh, yeah. my God. That's so true. Yeah, you're right. That is the better film. Well, gentlemen, 1938, last time we left uh, Yugoslavia, King Alexander I had been assassinated in France. His 11-year-old son, Peter II, was named regent and ruled with the aid of a council of three. His cousin slash uncle, one of those, nice, mm, w- cool. was uh, Prince Paul, and he was a fascist sympathizer. Um, <laughs> okay, less <that's> cool. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm not on his side anymore. <laughs> I really sympathize with the fascists. <laughs> um, the, the, so, so that royalist government was still getting um, called on by the Croats and the Serbs to devolve into regional um, governments or or countries. Um, Tito has has uh, he's uh, shacking up with that uh, Lucia, mm-hmm. and uh, she was the Austrian one that he met through doing communist uh, activities, right. and he is sending her mad love letters. Okay. And um, it's very clear that like she's like the real, I love you. the real love of his life, and um, but she is. And he met her when she was fourteen. Yeah. No, that was no, she wasn't that young. Um, that was the other, that was the first the first wife, the first yeah. wife. Nobody's perfect. Um, first our revolution. But she was in Stalin's USSR at the time, and the purge was going down. Um, he arrived. Talk about uh, good sequel. Yeah, I was gonna say he arrived in Moscow, Tito himself, in August thirty eight, and um. He found that the Soviet secret police had arrested and executed nearly every single prominent member of the Communist Party of Yugoslavia. Jesus Christ! The, the monarchy secret police. No, no, no. no. Stalin. Stalin's. Stalin? Stalin. Yeah. yeah, he was. He was like, because just because you're from another country, like the purge was like, let's get everybody. Yeah, it's a purge. You it's know, a, it's like it's like, like making an omelet. But by virtue of just being from another country, it's like. But like they're communists. Dude, not I mean, good enough. Well, he killed a lot of communists too. Yeah, Russian he, communists he, too. He sure did kill a lot of people. Yes, <laughs> but it was like 
it was that thing of the consolidation of power to rid them of any potential yeah. Trotskyists. We kind of talked about that in the last episode. <sighs> um, she was accused of being a German spy. She's 23 years old, Lucia, and she was arrested and executed in a Moscow prison on September 27th. Fuck. Tito wrote to the commentary that he, quote, felt guilty for not noticing his wife's treacherous actions due to lack of vigilance, which means... I just don't want you to kill me. Yeah, I'm I have sure. nothing to do with her. I am yep. sure she was a spy. She's dead. For, I, forget, I don't even know her name. Yeah. yeah, Forget about her. She's dead. Why am I here? His ex-wife. Pussy stank too. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys? Come and turn on all of us. Yeah. <laughs> His ex-wife, Polka, was also arrested as an imperialist spy and got a two-year prison sentence. Um, he sent his 14-year-old boy, Zarko, remember Zarko? Mm -hmm. To a boarding school in Ukraine. Um, he ran away from that. He tried enrolling him in another boarding school closer to Moscow, but Zarko ran away from there as well. Um, one of Zarko's friends, <laughs> um, one of Zarko's friends, uh, convinced his family to take him in, and uh, he was good then. He was a good boy. There was a fence. <laughs> uh, the Munich Agreement was signed, allowing Nazi Germany to annex the Sudetenland from Czechoslovakia. Uh, the country would, would go on to lose more territory to Hungary and Poland, and cease to exist by the end of the year. Three months later, there were parliamentary elections in Yugoslavia, and the fascist, the fascist governing Yugoslav Radical Union won the majority of the National Assembly. So there was a, a large uh, fascist presence in Yugoslavia. Let's go from uh, an autocratic single head of state to an autocratic single head of state, <laughs> except this time we wrote our name on paper. Yeah, yeah, we, we chose this. Yeah. Um, My God. Yeah. These are the last elections until the end of World War II. In 1939, Prince Paul appointed a Serbian, uh, Dragiz uh, Svetkovic, as prime minister. And um, springtime, Spanish Civil War is over. Franco's in charge in Madrid. Um, Nazi Germany, allied with Italy, signed a neutrality treaty with the Soviet Union. The Nazis got Lithuania and Western Poland, while the Soviet sphere of influence would include Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Moldova, northeastern Romania, and eastern Poland. Um, Tito is now in his late 40s and he's, uh, he's not going to stay single for long his third spouse was a 25, 25 year old Jewish Slovenian woman Oof, so her, fucking her, nice. her to Haas <laughs> her to Haas um, some historians say that uh, th their wedding was never legal um, which is another example of, of the mystery surrounding Tito like nobody knows the full story on this guy um, I mean you know a lot of things going on I mean, who cares yeah. you can't put love on a piece of paper yeah man. Tito was the common terms candidate for the Communist Party of Yugoslavia's new secretary general. Um, he assumed the position in 1939 in Moscow. Tito worked on translating the history of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union into Serbo-Croatian. This coming from a guy who couldn't pass the second grade and was a terrible speller. <laughs> Handwriting sucked, too. He should have seen the yeah. copies. Yeah, he's uh, good at delegating, though. He was working with a very senior um, communist uh, from from Yugoslavia. Write his name in into <laughs> Karl Marx. We're just going to delete that. Like, <laughs> Tito. This guy's name was uh, Vladimir Senjko Kopic. Uh, he was the second command uh, uh, at the CPY. And they'd only finished the first chapter of the translation when Kopic was arrested uh, and executed for being a Trotskyist. Works remained unfinished since. Uh, Tito kept on working on the translation with another Yugoslav communist, but like translating this book is just another potential minefield, right? Yeah. Um, he faced accusations from a Yugoslav communist with a German background. This accuser claimed that an inaccurate translation of a passage showed that Tito was a Trotskyist. Yeah. Of course, Jesus so Christ. So could you explain to me, because I'm dumb, uh, what are the finer points that uh, uh, you know delineate um, one from a Leninist to a, to a Trotskyist or hell, even a good old-fashioned Marxist? Uh, I mean... I don't know how it breaks down. Um, I think that's like kind of intellectual nerd shit. Uh -huh. um, with body with a body count. <laughs> yeah, and but more than anything, what it really means, what it's really code for here is whose side are you on? Are you e either you're an absolutely devoted Stalinist or you're dead? Right. Trotsky is a guy that fucked off to Mexico. You know what I mean? Like right. he, he's like it, it's just really. Party, if, if, party if there is any question that you are not the most died in the wool Stalinist, you're fucking dead right. in, in this time. Um, and even I guess I would imagine, and listeners correct us because we're dumb. Uh, but I would imagine I would say Trotsky would probably like we know you don't need a head of state like 
Oh, like Stalin. Ma- I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe we that- should know this. I mean, seems like something. It seems like maybe something we can explore on the Patreon if you want to get. But the po- the point is, is that it's really a g- cult of personality. Yeah, kind of thing. exactly. Are you a MAGA? Yeah. Do you what? agree? Yeah, no. I mean, I know I agree. I agree with that. But I'm sure there's some finer Are points. Are you a MAGA that or help, a Rhino? Help define you know? it better. Well, yeah. The well, I mean, of those, I the big first three is like Stalinism is just brute. It's, yeah, absolute brutality. Yeah. Yes, there is finer points, but you know, it's 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 yeah. anarcho syndicalism versus you know what like it's like okay, fine, yeah. what, whatever, we got it. it. I mean, with us, with us or against us is what it boils down to. Yeah, the point, the thing is, is with all these guys, it's it, it the Titoism becomes a thing. Uh-huh. It, there's always a fucking name in front of it. It's not as if mm-hmm. like it's like a belief. Yeah, there's always a name in front of it. So it's all it's just cult, a guy. It's all cult of personality yeah. shit. Um, yes, there are finer points, but the main point is that Stalin didn't like Trotsky, yeah. wanted him out, and then wanted to be completely uh, solidified in power, yeah. and so anybody that was potentially against him was an enemy. Got it. Um, I can get behind that. Sure, yeah. That works for me. So, Tito still had influential communists to vouch for him. Um, so he survived this translation uh, snafu, and... Um, he got another denouncement from another Yugoslav communist, but uh, that guy that accused him of being a Trotskyist also got arrested. Um, so the reason why this shit didn't really stick to him again and again was for a few reasons. Um, as we saw in part one, a, a, an absolute working class background, like the, like we said, factory floor communist, yeah. you know, um, that he had a lack of intellectual debates. Uh, like or, or even concerns about communism, he was he was actively like anti intellectual. He was like, yeah, let's see it, you know, like uh, see if I can put together a muffler, pal. Uh, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? That that is such a dangerous um, tool. In, Not anti intellectual, but there was a distinct lack of interest. No, I under, I understand, and yeah. and both side both in you know fervent anti intellectualism and and just this kind of I would say let's call it a benign lack of interest for lack of a better word with him. It's such a powerful and dangerous tool in the demagogue toolkit because you, you automatically, you just scoop up everyone who's dumb. Yeah. And I don't mean that like dumb people. I mean, just you talk like a normal person and people go, he talks like me. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, his, his, um, you know, his, like, kind of, like, trade unionism and, and, and uh, you know, uh, interest in just general labor stuff. Yeah. It's, like, when he goes to Moscow that he finds out about bol- Bolshevism. Right. Bolshevism is where it really starts being bullshit. You know what I mean? Because it's, like, it's that same cult of personality thing where it's, like, it's Leninism where it's, like, I want to win no matter what. Yeah. And that's, like, where you get the splits with the Mensheviks and all that sort of shit. Like, it's, like, you know, um, it's... It's very, it's not democratic, right. you know what I mean? Um, so you go like, is that really the will of the people? Right. What you say is, you know? We speak for them. Um, so another reason was he had a charismatic personality, okay? He's got um, an, an ability to land influential friendships as well. So these are all the reasons why he ends up escaping these purges. Almost like the last man standing, yeah. you know? Um... September 1st, Hitler's dawn invasion of Poland went off without a hitch. France and Great Britain declared war on Germany. Start of World War II. On October 10th, the USSR pressed Finland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania into allowing Soviet garrisons into their territories. Finland says no. Uh, they attacked on, uh, the Soviets attacked Finland on November 30th, and they held them off for three months, humiliating them on a global scale. That was the shit with all the skis and yeah, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one guy who took fucking 18 guys worth of meth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah good guy. Yeah. Um, Some say he won the war. Yeah. yeah. Um, the start of February of 1940, the Red Army launched a 14-division assault on Finland. Uh, Finland would submit in under a month and sue for peace. Over 70,000 Finns died in battle. The Soviets lost 200,000. They are, uh, they got bodies to kill, dude. Dude. Like they are, yeah, yeah. They're, I, I want, I, I it's want amazing to, when you don't feed a people and they have so many. I, well, they'll do anything if you promise them food. Like, I, I was talking to my, my brother one time or something. I was like, like, I was talking shit on Russia, you know? Like, <laughs> tell me, like, tell me one good thing they make, dude. Like, 
okay, besides vodka and oil, like there's no fucking Russian car. Like you can't name a a a, a, a tangible good mm. that comes from Russia. And I was just talking shit, and he goes, "People, they are a people factory." Yeah, like, dude. World War Two. How many? I know. Pick up the dead guy's gun in front of you, dude. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Just, and then we'll shoot you if you retreat. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's not nothing. So I had to, I had to take my shit talking back. <laughs> so in June, the Nazis entered Paris. They spent the summer fighting uh, Great Britain in the skies, failed to secure a long a victory, forcing them to postpone an invasion of England. Um, 900 British fighters died in the Battle of Britain, but the Nazis lost 1,700. In October, the Communist Party of Yugoslavia held its fifth land conference in Zagreb. Tito was um, simultaneously holding his own underground mini-congress to sketch out the CPY's leftist strategy. Their number one goal was armed insurrection and a Soviet-style federalist solution to their nationality conflict. There were 7,000 CPY members, but over 17,000 Yugoslavs had joined the Young Communist League. So they had a lot... The Young Avengers? Yes, exactly. It's like, eh, they got some good stories. (laughs) It's not the main... Yeah. Um, Fast forward to 1941. Zarko is 17. He's still in Russia with the Friends family. Uh, He serves in the Red Army following his father's footsteps. This time he's fighting the Nazis. Um, Good. Seems like a good move, solid. Excuse me. Um... John, are you debating if fighting Nazis is good? No, I'm not. I'm I'm reading. <laughs> I was vamping. Uh oh, so so basically How do you feel about fighting Nazis? <laughs> it's great. It's good. Uh, cool. Yeah. Um Come because on. his son well what he wasn't killed by the secret police and um and because Tito wasn't killed by the secret police, some of his critics would say that you know he grasped up other people in the in the Communist Party of Yugoslavia, snitched on them. Um, oh, okay. And, oh. and 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 as if, um, uh, you know, Zargo uh, Zarko was getting preferential treatment because of, um, uh, you know, names yeah. that 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 uh, Tito traded. Well, maybe he's getting preferential treatment because his dad has some clout or yeah, something. Yeah, he's fucking know. cool. Not, 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 not really in the Red Army. You know what I mean? Like Zarko is kind of like. Um, well, I mean, that's oh, that's the. You're right. That's the theory. Okay. Um, Snitching's the name of the game. <laughs> But the thing is, is that according to the Russian authorities, during that whole time when, when that CPY purge was going down in Moscow, um, Tito would just say, "I don't even know that guy." He would lie. Um, he would he wouldn't he wouldn't send anybody you know to to their death knowingly or whatever. Yeah, I'll be like, you know, he doesn't know anybody. He's probably he's harmless. So Prince Paul in the roy- in, in the royalty in the monarchy had taken over. Um, he was the fascist leading one, and uh, a coup. Then put uh, the kid back in, the 11-year-old, Prince Peter II. Oh, God. Um, two, ten days later, the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia, and uh, the kid, Peter II, flies to London. Um, <laughs> hey, Mr. Churchill. I, yeah. I need a new diaper. <laughs> yeah. On April 10th, the Croatian Ustasha, General uh, Slavko Kvaternik, uh, proclaimed the independent state of Croatia. Um the fascist Ustasha party had been around since 1929, and they had one of those, like, stupid little fake swastikas that's, like, more of a cross, you know what <laughs> I mean? But, but they're clearly, you know, it's like hey, look. four-stripe Adidas. Yeah, they were the Hydrox to the uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. to the Oreo swastika. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, but they're what, red vibes. what is going to be a thing here is, um, so they're now carving out their own thing, right? Yugoslavia. Croatia. Croatia. Which is in Yugoslavia. And that's confusing. Mm-hmm. So from 1941 to 45, the Ustasha regime would murder between 332 to 352,000 Serbs. Oh, my God. 24,000 to 26,000 Roma people. Now, those are gypsies, Matt. That's what you would call them. <laughs> I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> yeah, it's in the, he wrote it in the notes. Pause for Aaron. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pause for Aaron <laughs> yeah. to call Matt a racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> calls for do? Aaron to project his own racism <laughs> and use words he likes to use. What, gypsy? Yeah. Travelers, excuse me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think gypsy is offensive. I think um, it's fine. I know. <laughs> it's I know. cool. I know you think it's fine. You said it's, it's fine. It's a much cooler word than Broma or Traveler. Um, <laughs> it had didn't some sort of mystical uh, itinerant. Um, they would also kill twenty one human. Twenty one between twenty one and twenty three thousand Jews. Um, also, not good. Correct. 
Uh, and those are called Jews. <laughs> so, so the Yugoslavian uh, like monarchy, you know, their military, uh, they fought the Nazis for eleven days and then surrendered. Um, Tito responded by forming a military community com- committee within within the uh, Communist Party. Tito's forces were known as the Partisans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, we, could, could uh, do better. Did it sound better in Slavic? I think they were all called Partisans in any of the countries. Yeah, you know. that's the thing. That's I mean, did lame. it sound better? Like the the, the word? Uh, I don't know. Tito's wife Herta gave birth to a son named Alexander <laughs> on um, May twenty first. For the rest of his life, he went by the nickname Misho. At six months old, um, Herta gave her son to her family to raise. Throughout his relationship with Herta, Tito had a mistress, Devajanka. She was 19 when they met, and she served as his secretary before and during the war. T- tale is old yep. as time. Yep. Oh, I need someone. I barely know how to write. Mm. Take it. Take this note down. <coughs> yeah. Take this note down. And your top off. <laughs> he gave her the Croatian codename of Stenka. <laughs> I called her that because she reminded me of a brook, a perpetual spring of fresh and clear water. Oh my god! A spring that gushes from beneath a stone and enhances my view just oh. with its appearance. Oh my! Stenka was an infinite source of my ideas, intellectual, revolutionary, and political. She inspired me and gave me physical pleasure. And until the <laughs> yeah. end of her short life, she was a strong source of spiritual support. Oh for my me. god! Oh, I bet she was. Looks like we got ourselves a squider. <laughs> yeah. Give the name Cytheria. Yeah. Also, yeah. also she uh, she takes good notes. Yeah. <laughs> good handwriting, good yeah. short yeah. So yeah. not only that, guys, you're going to like this. This is going to make you real, real hard. Stenka was also his most loyal bodyguard. Mm. Every, <laughs> night, every night she slept in a room in front of Tito's bedroom with an armed pistol. God, um, can you can, can we convince Marcel to do that? Yes. Yes. I'm you not, got the guns. You can. I, I'm not involved. <laughs> Bro. You can give her an AR. Yeah. Um... <laughs> The CPY rules, though, forbade uh, partisans from getting romantically involved. Uh oh. When questioned that about the relationship, rule. Tito said, "Do what you want. I can't be without that woman. She's my bodyguard." <laughs> yeah. He's also in charge, so it's like. Yeah, the, but yeah. this is the beginning of that thing of like, Come ah, on. one rule for Not Tito: the fascist luck. bodyguard on yeah. Netflix starring Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> June 27, Tito was appointed commander-in-chief of the all-national liberation and military forces. Oh. By the fall, Yugoslavia was controlled by a German-backed puppet government, the government of national salvation. The, mili- <laughs> the military- Did they have the Salvation Army? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean- the military was known as the Black Chetniks, led by the staunchly anti-communist Costa Pe- Pezenaz. Tito and the CPY wanted to see- flee Belgrade for a safer rebel-controlled country. To leave Belgrade, Tito had to get some papers from Dragolub. Milutinovich, who was a military leader with the Chetniks. So the Chetniks now... They were a doo-wop band in the 50s. <laughs> well, like I said, they're, they're, they're this puppet government... Um, Drago, follow That's, uh, that's uh, you know... They're, they're, you know, whatever. Yugoslavs that the Nazis are like, you're going to do what we want, right? This is a fascist riff in C. Yeah. Try and keep up with the changes. <laughs> it's your cousin, Drago. <laughs> um... Some historians believe that Nazis allowed Tito to leave Belgrade so he can divide the rebel forces like Lenin did when he arrived in Russia in a train car. Whether that's true or not, Tito and the Communist Party of Yugoslavia took trains through Serbia and arrived at the village of Robej on September 18th. The partisans liberated the first territory for the Nazis in World War II Europe. The first liberation of, of anything. Uh... So the Republic of Ujice. This is a western portion of Serbia with over 300,000 residents. Yeah. Tito sat down with one of his one of his rivals, Chechenik leader uh, Dresa Mihailovic, on two separate occasions for strategy talks. Maybe that's exchange of prisoners or you know arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, comparisons of drinking shots like an Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the fall of forty one, his 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 boy Zarko lost his right hand and part of his arm defending Moscow against the Nazis. Oh my God! For his courageous fight, he received the Order of the Red Star, but the Soviet military. Soviet Army's highest award conferred personally by Marshal Stalin. Wait, did you say uh, so? Right hand and right arm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I guess if uh, you lose if, most of your yeah. right arm, is... yeah. If you lose your right arm, I think you also lose your. He right kept. He kept his right hand, but he clearly was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the main point is is that he clearly wasn't getting preferential treatment. No, he, he, he got, was. You know, he was. He yeah. was Bullets he, don't give a shit who your daddy. is. I mean, yeah. he could have just fallen down the stairs, probably. Yeah, it could have been a machine accident. Yeah. Uh, Tito gave orders for all of his uh, troops to assist uh, fleeing Jewish people. 
Uh, more than two thousand Jewish oh, sold, more than two thousand Jewish oh. soldiers volunteered for his army. De- do it. December twenty first saw the creation of the partisans' first proletarian brigade. Um, in forty two, Tito is now fifty. March first, Tito created the second proletarian brigade. The partisans put together the People's Committees in the liberated territories to serve as the civilian government. By the end of November, the anti-fascist council of the National, Liber- Li- Na- National Liberation of Yugoslavia met in the Bihak Republic, a liberated area of Nazi-occupied Croatia. Resistance representatives hammered out plans for the country's post-war structure. They settled on a federation of the Yugoslav nations. Um, so this would be like, you know, the communists and all other partisan forces coming together to be like, all right, what? What's These were not Nazis, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I know this is a dumb question, but it take, it's going back a couple minutes. The um, the Yugoslav uh, the the monarchy was you said they were killing the Jews and the Roma and the uh, that was them, right? Um, no, no, no. That would be the Ustasha, which is the fascist government of Croatia. Okay, and they were why why were they? I mean, they were a fascist government, and uh, they had they they yeah. basically were. Um, uh, Nazi puppets. Nazi puppets. Okay, so that's why they were killing the Jews and the. Yeah, so their their whole thing is really fucked up because they also were like way more wed to the Catholic Church than than other Nazi regimes. So you would have actual priests being at the constant like the death camps and stuff. Uh, it was um, perhaps you know I mean the original thing was you know the Vatican in exchange for what the deal with Mussolini. That's like the like yeah. mm. one big thing of of. But the the Ustasha regime, you really see how bad the Catholic Church was during the Second World War. Um, they they were very aware of what was going on. Of course yeah. they were. Yeah. God told them. Priests in the fucking camps. That guy's writing. Uh, he's like write, taking down notes. He's sending it back. Like that. All of that info passes through the yeah. whole church. Everybody they get very knows. good notes. Um, Tito's ex-wife Herta had been previously arrested by the Nazis, and was exchanged for captured German officers in forty three. Yeah, once a week. In forty three, she was transferred to uh, liberated territory. Uh, the, the council met again in Yeza, Bosnia. They formed a 67-member presidency and nine-member National Committee of Liberation to serve as the country's provisional government. Tito was named president of the committee. After two years of occupying the Balkans, the Axis powers were starting to worry about an allied invasion. Their plan was to dismantle the partisans by killing, killing or capturing their keystone, Tito Bros. Mm. The partisans spent most of the year avoiding or enduring Axis attacks. When Tito was ra- wounded during the Battle of Sutjeska, on June 9th, 1943, and Roddy Rostanovich and Zdenka bandaged his arm and kept him safe. Uh, was he active in battle at 50? Yeah, oh, was he, he was He was escaping. The Nazis, um, they, there was a guy that they called the most dangerous man in Europe. That was... Uh, was it Hitler? Richard Branson? No, he was he was an operative for Hitler. Oh. And H- Hitler deliberately was like, get Tito oh, to this guy. Like, and uh, yeah. so they planned this thing where it was basically <laughs> like... Because the, the, the Axis... The Axis um, Occupation of Yugoslavia was also kind of like from Italy. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, like Trieste is right on the border mm-hmm. there. So from Italy, you had an occupying thing here, and then from uh, you know from the other side, you had the Nazis, and uh, so their lines of communication would kind of get fucked up. Uh-huh. But you know, um, the and they had different people that were native fighting on both sides. But you know, they would differ on strategies, whether or not to trust the Chetniks, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, but they knew that Tito was an effective operator. So, like, this guy, uh, this Nazi, the most dangerous man in Europe, they call him, I forget his name, is Otto something. Um, but he, he organized Previous. he organized this this thing where it was like, all right, we're going to have fucking artillery bombing where we know their headquarters are uh, in this Sitjeska, um, near Sitjeska River. And then we're going to have um, uh, German planes bombarding them. And then from this side, we're going to have the uh, Italian ground forces come in. And so it was... Um, Basically, a huge encirclement, and they were far outnumbered, but uh, they did escape. And this battle, this battle of Sutjeska, was the basis for a movie where fucking Richard Burton played Tito. Whoa. Really? Yes. <laughs> now, who played Winston Churchill in that movie? I think you might know, Matt. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I love to take baths. <laughs> I didn't know how I would play a fat drunk. <laughs> but somehow I dug deep, inhaled three cigars. <laughs> I insisted he had a mustache. <laughs> um, so there's a story, there's a story around, this awesome. ti- around this time. We should watch that movie. Uh, oh, we got to do it. It covers, every, covers all of our profiles. Uh, I think it's just called The Battle of Sitjeska. 
And it's in it's bad name. I wanted him <laughs> to change it to Orson as Winston. She was a bubbling brook. Um, there's a story about Zdenka and Herta, his wife, finding themselves in the same room in 43. Both women asked Tito which of them should leave. Oh, and he replied, I'll go out. Smart man. Smart. Yeah. That is, that's how you know he was a true politician. Talk Her- about yourself. Herta saw Kiss that- if you want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Herta saw that as her cue to take off, and Tito stayed with Stenka. Um Now, the Allies have basically realized that the Chetniks are, are just, you know, they're, you know, not, they're completely collaborating with, with the Nazis and the fascists. And they can't be trusted, and they're like, um, Tito's the only one making headway. We've got to, we've got to throw our support behind Tito. Um, King Peter II, um, you know the 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 monarch in exile, President Roosevelt, and Prime Minister Churchill joined Stalin in recognizing Tito and the partisans at the Tehran Conference, wow. November twenty eighth to December first, nineteen forty three. Wow. <coughs> now, Aaron, I know you're probably wondering, this Tito guy. Spent a lot of time in prison. Yeah. You know? Did he fuck? Yeah. Did he Did he go gay? Did he do gay shit? Mm-hmm. Right. That's my number one question. I know. Yeah. I, mean, I can see you clawing at you. I mean, you can see it bulging through my jeans. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the table just moved. <laughs> yeah. So he spent a lot of his adult years in prisons, jails, the military. You oh, might wonder, did he ever have sex with men? Guy like you, you might wonder that. I think about it nonstop. Yeah. Um, there is no uh, records of that. Uh, of course not. Of course, there's no records, but that doesn't it's answer just the a, question. A handshake and a wink. Yeah. However, it's not even a handshake. However, how 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 would it be uh, to be gay around this time? There's two examples Pretty I want to tell you about. Pretty, I mean, in private, great. Um, the Croatian detachment of the Nap- National Liberation Army discovered that Josip Marsetic, Mardesic, the commander of the Croatian Partisans Communication Network, had conducted affairs with several of his male subordinates. He was swiftly executed. The former Deputy Fuck. Prime Minister of Yugoslavia, uh, Yugoslavia Milovan uh, Diaz, his war memoirs include a story from Sanzak where, quote, one Muslim, a good soldier, and a zealous communist was exposed as a homosexual by other soldiers to the regional secretary, Rifat Berzovic. Rifat doubted what he should do and asked Diaz, should I execute the freak? Diaz was also unsure, admitting that he neither knew the Communist Party of Yugoslavia's practice, nor Marx and Lenin's opinions on homosexuality. Ultimately, he concluded that, quote, from such vices suffer proletarians and not only bourgeois decadence, and that it cannot oh. be tolerated for homosexuals to have any party functions, nor to be among the leaders of the partisan movement. Diaz said he only later learned that, quote, that homosexual, who in appearance was sheer manhood, was very brave mm-hmm. and courageously fell in battle, end quote. So... You, you gotta know. have the gays. You gotta. I mean, them. yeah, look at there. Hitler they're... kept some gays in his cabinet. Yeah. Mm. I don't know his closet. Belgrade, March seventh, nineteen forty-four. Tito assembled the provisional government of the Democratic Federal Yugoslavia and served as the provisional prime minister. His government included representatives from Peter II's royalist government in exile. Oh. When it comes to character in battle, some scholars say that Tito would report repeatedly call for surrender when the enemy was retreating offering them am- amnesty. He banned the execution of POWs and ordered that suspects be transferred to mili- cor- military court. Still, from 1941 to 1945, partisans executed at least 30,000 Eustacia troops, plus many civilian refugees. Uh, the Eustacia, though, were particularly brutal. Yeah. So it's like... But civilian refugees is... No, of that's course. That's a shame. Pretty, it's pretty bad. But yeah, you know... Well, I mean, yeah, there's also a thing there, too, where you go like, where the, the civilians that were riding high on the Eustache, like, right. it's that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, not always, but no matter what, it's wrong, yeah, of well, course. Victim blame, John. Keep going. <laughs> um, you just sit there. I'll tell the story. Uh, <laughs> Tito managed to escape the Nazis. You gotta have the gates! <laughs> uh, Tito managed to escape the Nazis on May 25th after the raid on Javar. Um... The Allies were now assisting the partisans by parachuting behind Axis lines. On June 17th, the Treaty of Viz was signed on the Dalmatian island of Viz. Croatia's Dalmatian, uh, Croatia's Dalmatian coast is uh, the eastern side of the Adriatic Sea. It was an attempt to merge Tito's government with Peter II's royalist government in exile. That month, the Balkan Air Force was formed as well. In September, Peter II called on all Yugoslavs to come together under Tito's leadership. Oh. T- Tito was also recognized by the all of the Allied authorities as the Prime Minister of Yugoslavia and Commander-in-Chief of Yugoslav forces. 
On the 28th, Tito signed an agreement with the USSR allowing the Red Army temporary entry into Yugoslavia to help fight the Nazis across the Northeast. The partisans were able to break through the Nazi lines and force their retreat. That fall, the CPY leadership decided to expel all ethnic Germans from Yugoslavia. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen. They issued a special decree on November 21st seizing and nationalizing all ethnic Germans' property, and they set up 70 camps for ethnic Germans. Where have I heard this before? Oh, hmm. my God. Um, at Camps. the end of April, Soviet troops are closing. Jews, up. you're cool. <laughs> These you're Germans. Germans. Well, unless you're German. Oh, shit. Mm. Say you're Jewish. <laughs> end of April of, of 45, Soviet troops are closing in on the Reich Chancellery. Hitler and Eva Braun commit suicide. The corpses are burned in the garden. Berlin surrendered to the Allies ma- May 2nd. Catapult in the air. Tito saw Misho for the first time in April 45, and the boy was reunited with his mother, Herta, in May. Um, this year marked the first official state celebrations of Tito's birthday on May 25th. This started a tradition that lasted until 1988. Wow. Tito's birthday was celebrated as a national day of youth, including a nationwide relay ending in mass performances, mixing communist propaganda with the Yugoslav military. Archbishop Aloysius Stepanats, the president of the Bishops' Conference in Yugoslavia, was released from prison in June. He met with Tito to discuss the state of the Catholic Church in Yugoslavia. Three months later, the Bishops' Conference released a letter condemning partisan war crimes. So, you know, they're like, look what those guys did. So not a great meeting between them. Um, They probably saw the writing on the wall, is my guess. Mm. In November, Tito's People's Front, led by the CPY, won a national election with an overwhelming majority. I believe it was like 80%. Um, Tito was the people's supremely beloved liberator. Everybody saw him as the guy that liberated Yugoslavia. Internationally, and, and he's the guy. And yeah, it makes sense. I mean, fucking Roosevelt and. And this is the, this is the days when you could get eighty percent. Nobody, nobody knew it was fake. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one hundred and ten percent of the people voted, but they, he got eighty percent. Yeah. Um, he was confirmed as the prime minister and the minister of foreign affairs. His new nation will be formally recognized as the Federal People's Republic of Yugoslavia. Wow. The Yugoslav Constituent Assembly formally deposed King Peter the Second. And adopted a new republican constitution. The Yugoslav People's Army, or the JNA, was constructed from the partisan military, and it was the fourth strongest standing army in Europe. Tito also set up a new state security agency, or administration, or a secret police, and a security agency, the Department of People's Security. Intelligence officers were rooting out and bringing to trial a lot of Nazi collaborators, including the Catholic clergy. Oh, that's... That's that's a good movie. That's part of the Eustachia regime. That's a good movie, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you guys... I mean, I'll tease it here, but the Jewish resistance in in the ghettos under the Ustasha regime, I saw a documentary on that. I think I've told probably both of you about where it, it blew my fucking mind. Yeah. Um, there was just these amazing stories of, of um, Jewish guys going to uh, Ustasha meetings by ambushing Ustasha guys, stealing their uniforms, mm-hmm. going to the meetings to find out where they would be rounding up Jews, then showing up, intercepting Ustasha secret police, Going into the houses and starting to speak Hebrew to them, and then bringing them all back to like this huge tenement block in the city where they kept knocking down walls between buildings to make it bigger. Like they were just like hiding in this huge thing. And a lot of the leaders of that resistance movement also were uh, founding um, Israeli government. Like as soon as the yeah, war was over, right. mm-hmm. fascinating shit. Yeah, a lot of a lot of badasses went down. It was. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was one of the most incredible documentaries I've ever seen. Like my jaw was on the floor. These guys were so fucking brave. Yeah. Um. Yovanka. Not like the gypsies. <laughs> what? Just saying. At least you didn't put it on me this time. Yeah. No, I looked at you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you didn't have to say anything, but you gave me a look, and you were like. Eh. Yovanka Budisavljevic was a 21-year-old Croatian Serb member of the Yugoslav Partisans. She joined the party after Ustasha troops burned down her family's home. Her role, yeah, do it. her role in 45 was housekeeping and checking Tito's food and overall cleanliness for disease prevention. Uh, and also, well, also what kind of yeah. forest uh, we're just, creature? We're, we're just introducing Yovanka right now. That's okay. all. That's all. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. The UN delivered what else su- did she keep clean? Uh, the UN delivered supplies to help alleviate hunger amongst Yugoslav citizens. But rural poverty after the war was a major problem. Um, in August, the government... Did you say rural poverty? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in August, the government seized medium and large land holdings, along with all property owned by banks, churches, monasteries, absentee landlords, private companies, and the expelled Germans, and they gave the peasants half the land and the rest Shit. to state-owned enterprises. Hmm. So you can see where we're going here, right? 
pretty much com- communism. Mm-hmm. Um, I think right there, let's take a little break. Okay, sure. All right, be right back, folks. And we're back. <laughs> that was good, right? Very good. It's like Ozempic original. Yeah. Um. So, guys, uh, Trotskyism that you fucking raked me over the coals for after I did this research is no. Uh, I don't. I'm not raking you over not, the coals. Yeah, no, I'm not raking at you. all. I didn't know what it was. You start laughing now. Well, now I'm gonna tell you. You ready? You dumb fucks. You pair of dumb pricks. Yeah. How long, wait. How long was this break? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> two months later, John's grown a beard and has written a treatise on Trotskyism. So I guess the, je- the- Bill and Ted when they come back, <laughs> that six month fucking intense guitar training course sure went fast. <laughs> so Trotskyism is um, it's a state of permanent revolution is the idea, and it's and and, and it's way more. Um, That's how the Earth was created. It would be way more uh, democratic and less bureaucratic. And and uh, a permanent state of socialism as uh, Stalin would prefer. That would be the big difference between the two. As as Trotsky would prefer. Trotsky would prefer a more democratic, permanent state, right, of revolution with no like huge bureaucratic, right. you know, thing. state. Yes, uh, right. yeah, true communism. Right. Yeah, there's a guy. There's a guy out there, and every day he's going, "Oh fuck, the revolution's going down." Mm. Uh, up the revolution. Yeah. Yeah, it's, get, call Prince in here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're in his house. But wait a minute, he's a monarch. <laughs> yeah, you're like, whose side am I on of this oh, fucking revolution? At the same time, this music is really good. Yeah. So listen, uh, the beautiful Zdenka <sighs> came down with tuberculosis. She was sent to oh, Moscow for no. treatment. She Uh-oh. she defied doctors' orders and returned to Yugoslavia before she was cured. She died shortly afterward. She was buried in the yard of Tito's Belgrade residence, Aww. which is Belle Devori. Never leaving her beloved's side. And she was buried with a, a, a pistol, just in case. Yeah. And a notepad. Sometimes, Sometime after her death, uh, Tito wrote to Herta, trying to reconcile. Hey. hey. So, wild thing happened. It turns out I love you. Yeah, he, he goes, Um, he wanted to become Yugoslavia's first lady. She would have uh, been an excellent... There's no other ladies here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she would have been an excellent first lady, considering that she was the mother of Tito's son and highly educated, fluent in several languages. But as yeah. the story goes... She sent Tito a very brief letter in response that said, quote, My dear, Herta Haas kneels before a man only once. Oh, girl! Damn. You tell him. Dude, that's yeah. like Dr. Doom level. Yeah. It's, it's twice. You brought up Dr. Doom in the last one, too. Well, yeah, it's because it's, a a very, uh, ap- it's very applicable to a lot of things, man. Yeah. If it's kneeling... If <laughs> not kneeling, <laughs> wearing masks, uh-huh. chess... Uh-huh. Um, Eastern Europe. He's actually Roma. He's Gypsy. He's a good one. That's <laughs> he's one of the good ones, John. Oh, God. Thanks. You, you were so close to just I know. doing it correctly. Let's see how many times you can do it this episode. Um, <laughs> Tito tried to distract himself with some high-profile relationships. Oh, he had a tor- <laughs> Taylor Swift tor- torrid affair with Nina Dumbadze, who was a discus world record holder. Whoa, oh, strong lady. Yeah, she was from Georgia. Um. Ooh. The Soviet Sports Authority. Well, hey there. The, so- the Soviet. <laughs> I'm a peanut farmer. Not that Georgia. <laughs> the Soviet Sports Authorities wouldn't let her move to Belgrade. He fell for the popular Russian film actress um, Tatiana Okanensky when he met her at a Moscow screening for her film Night Over Belgrade. He offered to dump her boyfriend for her. Uh, I think we know what that means. <laughs> Into um, the river. Yeah. Her boyfriend was the writer Boris Gorbatov. And he, and he accused him of being a homosexual. Mm. He accused the writer of being a homosexual? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, By no. the way, you know your boyfriend, He's that little gay. intellectual writer guy? That dude's gay. He's I'll, gay. I'll dump him for you. I'll dump him for there you. Are guys who are still, guy. There are guys who are still Two trying guys? to use that tactic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're dating a gay guy? Weird. I'll dump him for you. <laughs> and their name's Tito. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tatiana refused his marriage proposals, but he sent her black roses for months. Tragically, Tatiana was one of the many women abducted and raped by Soviet state security administrator Lavrenti Beria at his home. Um, so Who the fuck is this guy? That's the guy in... His death of Stalin. Death yeah, of Stalin. Yeah. He, he's, um, he's the guy... He's actually the first guy to take over from Stalin uh, before it goes to uh, uh, Khrushchev and... Uh, fuck. And, uh, Rapist. Oh, j- basically. Really, most, really... Second most dangerous guy in Europe? Really bad. 
really bad. I mean, yeah. Um, and it would be like, you know, basically, you know, fuck me or you're going to a gulag, like that type of shit. Yeah, basically For the devil. years under Either trauma. way, I'm fucking you. Yeah. It was, uh, he was, he was really bad. Um, <sighs> she was sent to a gulag after their encounter, but she, she survived her imprisonment. She's a fucking celebrity, too. Like, he's doing that celebrity. Yeah. Yvanka got a pro- professional upgrade and became Tito's new personal secretary and lover. This may, may have been his inner circle's attempt to cool his womanizing. According to a biographer, in this way she became a part of the innermost security ring around Tito and had to sign a secret cooperation agreement with the state security service, which was the law. Uh, Mila Von Dila said of Yovanka, quote, She never appeared outside of Tito's company. We'd see her many times as she was keeping a vigil for hours in a hallway while we were holding a late night meeting inside to make sure she was available if Tito needed anything as he was going to sleep. Oh, my God. Because of that, the rats and lack of trust she was receiving from other servants was almost inevitable. (laughs) According to what was on offer, the motives for her closeness to Tito could have been explained in endless ways, none of which would show her character in a good light. Mm. Career climbing, cajolery, malicious female extravagance, exploitation. Malicious female extravagance? Good album. FME? Yeah. Malicious female extravagance. All these fantastic things. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Exploitation of Tito's lonesomeness. As far as she was concerned, Tito was a war and Communist Party deity for whom everyone was supposed to sacrifice everything they had. She was a woman deep in the process of comprehending comprehending Tito as a man, while also increasingly and devotedly falling in love with him. She was resigned to burn out or fade away, unknown and unrecognized if need be, next to the divine man about whom she dreamt and to whom she could only belong now that he had chosen her. Wait, who who and wrote what, that? Who wrote that? That is um, DS talking about um, her attitude towards that's Tito. That's fantastic. And Isn't that good shit? Yeah. Uh, we, all, we all deserve someone like that in our lives. And, and I, I knew it. you would like that. I have that. But I mean, know. also, it, you know, that's very poetic way of maybe saying maybe she thought he was hot and powerful. Oh, she definitely did. Yeah. She definitely did. I mean, um, it, it doesn't have to be some kind of well, like, it's, crazy. It's nicer thing. that way. I like yeah. the way John said it. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's just a little thing of also showing that maybe she was like never not a fan. Yeah. Like it was it was it was it was I mean he's got charisma. She was in the, like she was in the process of comprehending yeah. that him he was, as a man. As right. a man. And instead yeah. of a deity. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is pretty pretty cool. Yeah. He's but got, also this is a thing too is that like you know he shits. It's 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 but it's like it's like how <laughs> people cool to it. it's how Titoism is, is is like a thing where it's like you know, in that thing where like, he and he, you know, because of you saw like how the churches are involved, Orthodox churches, the Catholic Church, um, you know, he's going to be way more lenient about religion. He's not going to be like shutting it down like the Soviets or whatever. But also in lieu of a lot of religion, a lot of people would take to Tito right. the way, you know, communists wanted the state to be the religion. Exactly. You know what no, I mean? it, it's uh, it leaves a void. Yes. And, right. and people it's a need that we have. Yes, we need some sort of ruling yeah. structure. Uh, but he was beloved too, Mainly you know. And, and because yeah. and because he had, in everybody's mind, single handedly liberated the country. Um, yeah, he was a messiah. He he was he was and and anyway, but well, let's get there. Um, Tito's secret police, the Ozna, were hunting down bands of Chetniks all around Serbia. That's collaborationists. Uh, Draza Mihailovic was uh, their leader. He was found guilty of collaboration, high treason, and war crimes. He faced a firing squad in July. His remaining supporters went into hiding, running from safe house to safe house, fearing the Ozna at every turn. There was a memoir written by a Chetnik who'd already survived a Nazi concentration camp. I don't know. Maybe this is before they started collaborating. But had been captured by the Ozna, he recalled, quote, the Gestapo destroyed the body. Ozna raped the soul. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, and it, yeah, go, I mean destroying the body. One and done. Raping the soul? Oh, God, that is brutal. 1946, Archbishop Stepanach was arrested and put on trial. His charges were assisting Eustachia Terra and supporting the forced Catholic conversion of the Serbs. That was another big part of it. Um, do you ever get, uh, do you understand forced conversion? It's just like, come with us or die. I, but it's it's so... That was uh, what the, the Brits would do in... in, in and the Spanish, in, sure, my, yeah, my yeah, people. Yeah. Well, in Ireland, it was they, would, they were doing it while we were starving. So it was like, do you want a potato? Take, get baptized. Isn't it so, like... <laughs> it doesn't make it, any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Convert. I know, I know you're under duress. Yeah. And you don't believe it. You resent it. 
If anything. If anything. If anything. Yeah, they're just making the numbers, you know? But you you got to convert 25 a people a day. It's a long game. It is a long game. It's a long game because now you Mexico is Catholic. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's, it's the second generation. Yeah, you can, you exactly. Can people who you, don't, you don't want them. You want their kids. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think I only realized that as a as an adult, yeah, a yeah, long-term sure. view of forced conversion. Yeah, because they're going to their kids. They're going, yeah. no, no, you do this. This you is what you believe now. You're doing Yeah, you're doing this. Brilliant. Yeah. He is... So uh, the Serbs are are mostly Eastern, Eastern Orthodox, and 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 a small portion are Muslim. Um, that Archbishop receives a 16 year prison sentence, which was shortened and reduced to house arrest, with the option of get the fuck out of the country. And Yugoslavia was still considerably more religiously liberal than the other Eastern Bloc states. The Vatican responds by excommunicating Tito and the Yugoslav government. Oh no, he can't go to the Vatican. Damn. Yeah, well, he was raised Catholic, but it probably didn't upset him too much because. He had been an altar boy in his youth, and and there was a story. Uh, there was a story that might just be a story that uh, one time he was it's true. helping the priest to remove the vestments, and the priest and, helped him to remove. And the priest uh, his... got mad and hit him, and uh, Tito swore that he would never go into a church ever again. So who excommunicated yeah. who? You know, okay, what I mean? that's not right. that great of a story. Of all things, get me naked, boy. Yeah. 19... No, <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't want it to go to child abuse. You fucking. Yeah, I mean the hating he's been through worse than I think. Hating. Tito saw where undoing of the vestments was going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He said, "Go fuck yourself." Was, yeah. <laughs> so Tito started molding a new plan for the development of his country's economy, independent from Moscow. Um, mm. Diplomatic tensions, uh, you know, between them uh, escalated when Tito uh, wrote, "Quote." We study and take as an example the Soviet system, but we are developing developing socialism in our own country in somewhat different forms. Summer of 48, Yugoslavia made its first request for assistance from the U.S. Tito announced in December that Yugoslavia will be shipping raw materials to the West in exchange for more trade. Um, Tito, this is 48? Yeah. Tito always spoke harshly of Serbia's kings from history, but he adopted one of their traditions, naming himself the godfather to every ninth son. Ninth? Ninth. So, oh, it, oh, you know, see, every single family because uh, 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 they're having 10, 12. Well, is after the war, yeah, they're fucking, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's a godfather of like two kids a family. Some critics said this. Some critics said this was sexist, so he modified it to include daughters too. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah, that's even more people though. So he would yeah. ap- he would appear like kings of old uh, with cash. Yeah, if you had the ninth kid, he'd be like, ah, well, my goddaughter. Yeah, yeah. he'll. Like, a- yeah, well, it's like you know the the, the, the parents are fucking because it's it's like wheel of fortune. It's Wheel of Fortune. The war just ended. Ah, boy, nothing gets you rock hard like a quarter of the population of your continent. Now that's how you run a factory. That's what. Yeah, it's true. Me and my nine brothers cobbling together this fucking muffler. <laughs> well, there's only two of us left. Yeah. Well, our, the youngest one's the favorite for some reason. <laughs> so. Survived. Well, you made the most money too. Oh, true. Um, every ninth son, how arbitrary. And daughter. And that is specifically ninth, uh, uh, the Serbian king tradition. It was, yeah. And in many ways, he took on the appearance uh, and role of, of a of a, a king, including Prima Nocta, king, king of Yugoslavia. So a- around this time, too, Tito was like, "Yo, Albania, what's going on over there? Let's go." <laughs> Are he, you all so white? And he's talking about um, he's talking about basically folding them in to Yugoslavia, and he's. He's being like, we won't let colonist Serbs return to Kosovo as part of this agreement. He starts teaching Albanian as like a language in schools. He's really courting them big time. The Belushis. And, Albanian. Yeah. And he's... Um, End of list. Fun fact. Uh, so it, it never materialized because basically Stalin was like, yo, the West is not cool with this, you know? And also Tito was kind of weighing in on the side of the, the Greek Civil War, which had a communist faction. Mm-hmm. And um, I think in, in Greece, uh, 46 to 49, Greece and Albania are like our neighbors across the sea, I believe. Yeah. So he, he thought he was like, you know, like, oh, I'm going to get Albania. Like, I'm going to like he he was like kind of about to like create a little mini empire. You right, know what uh-huh. I mean? And so uh, with his style of Yugoslav socialism. Right. Or, or at least just get them on the team of, of not not Western, you know, shit. Um, but. It's still, yeah, it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not, it's not Soviet either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in the spring of 48, Stalin tried to purge the Yugoslav party leadership, but it was a resounding failure. Tito had an iron grip on the CPY, the army, and the secret police. Secret police. Um, hmm. 
Stalin felt that Tito and the CPY were cocky about their victory over the Nazis when, in his opinion, they'd actually been saved by the Red Army, which is just not true. You know? Also, at the end of the war, I don't know if I said, but there was a thing where it was like, once, once uh, like, they were liberated, like, Tito issued in an order, like, to Western and Eastern, like, the Russians and, you know, whoever. He's like, everybody get the fuck out of Yugoslavia. Yeah. It, was an, it was like, bounce. Huh. Party's huh. over, yeah. lights are on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he, he, uh, Stalin didn't like this, this, uh, this thing where he was like, oh, you're, you're like angering the West. Like he's going, this crazy Croat's going to get me nuked. You know what I mean? <laughs> but really it was, he saw him as a threat to his. He thought he was jealous. Yeah. 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 Jealousy is such a thing with Stalin. It's so, oh, so uh, yeah, pathetic. The insecure narcissism, <laughs> the paranoia, it's inherent to that position. Yes. But also the way he got there. It's and, an, and who he is, he, yeah, as that a he, person. all of those yeah. things are the same yeah. thing. That he, that, he, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that he didn't need Stalin's help. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a big thing. Yeah, um, hell, how, how dare he? Yeah, and then also Stalin's probably seeing like, oh, everybody likes this guy. He, he's yeah. so charming, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, he is charming. Nineteen forty nine. Uh, the U.S. had settled on providing Tito with economic aid. In return, the states demanded Yugoslavia stop aiding the Greek communists in the Civil War. The Greek monarchy ultimately triumphed over the communists with the support of the U.K. and the U.S. Stalin was trying to publicly condemn Tito for calling for the CPY's expulsion from the common form. Um, and on June 28, the common form formally expelled Yugoslavia, citing nationalist elements that had managed in the course of the past five or six months to reach a dominant position in the leadership of the CPY. A war of words followed... And economic boycotts were launched. Stalin even briefly considered sending in the Red Army. <laughs> Hungary and Romania expa expanded their armies and joined the Red Army on the Yugoslav border. Huh. In Moscow, public opinion was that once Tito lost Soviet approval, he would collapse. Stalin once said, quote, I will shake my little finger and there will be no more Tito. Wow. Now, to say that is one thing. But actions are quite another, and that's usually more their style. Yeah, and you know he's trying. He there was maybe twenty five assassination attempts on Tito from Stalin, and, and he accidentally uh, he once accidentally uh, tried to assassinate Castro. It's just it a big mix up, you know, just, dude. Uh, so they did have a guy that was called fucking Max Castro that was supposed to be from Max. He was like full. He was full Castro. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was like he was a guy that was like supposed to come in from Costa Rica or something. <laughs> he was just a head on a TV. <laughs> and they were like, we're gonna give. The, they're like, we're gonna give this guy some fucking, uh, you know, bacterial fucking uh, 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 thing that he'll unleash unknowingly. Yeah. They're like, we're gonna immunize him. It's like, no, you weren't. No, you don't, you don't care about Max they Castro. They haven't figured that out yet. So like, this is just one of the attempts. Um, they tried to send a human biological weapon. Yeah, yeah. A, guy, a guy that would unknowingly unleash like a biological thing. Like, they tried to they catapult a man. That's what that's yeah. old school like Genghis Khan shit yeah. is like catapulting a plague body <laughs> over this over the castle walls. So the thing is, is that he, except they did it with a fucking yeah, they put iron it in an automobile with an automobile. <laughs> so, it, but, but but Matt, you're right. It is exactly the same kind of thing as as Castro, where it's like like Castro, Tito has the same iron grip on totally knowing his surroundings. You know, Everyone loves him. Everybody yeah. loves him. That he, you go like he walked the walk to where he got. Yeah, they sent some lady to to seduce and kill him, and all she could, all she, fall, he seduced her. Fall in love. Yeah. So, in a letter to Stalin, Tito, dear friend, writes this, and it's maybe one of the greatest documents of all time. My dearest comrade. Um. I think it opens with, I'm going to do it in an iced tea voice. Of course. Do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> Stalin, <laughs> stop sending people to kill me. <laughs> we already captured five of them, one of them with a bomb and another one with a rifle. If you don't stop sending killers, I'll send one to Moscow, and I won't have to send a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you read it in the iced tea voice. <laughs> and I got news for you. <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> and I, I'll dump them for you. Yeah, I'll, do, I'll, I'll dump you for. <laughs> so Stalin's P.S. <laughs> that's amazing. He sent that. Yeah, to that blunt. I mean, that's straightforward. None of this flowery language. Stop sending people to kill me. Yes. Yeah. It is annoying and gay. <laughs> Don't make me say the R word. <laughs> the, the guy who gave that. I know to, what you did to them too. <laughs> the guy who gave that to Stalin jumped out the window. Oh, and left it. Yeah, he's yeah. like, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I wasn't here. I know what you do to president. <laughs> he's like, I have trouble reading. <laughs> yeah. Could you, sir, uh, 
Tell me what this says. I, my <laughs> eyes aren't. Yeah. It's like, oh, it says I'm a great leader. Oh. Huh. Huh. Um. So Stalin's... <laughs> Stop sending people to kill me. Yeah. <gasps> hey, guy. Bro. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm bro. I'm bro. What happened to bros before O's? Dude? <laughs> so it was called the common form, right? Which is, you know, the the... The, the body that Yugoslavia's Communist Party was expelled from. The Stalin's accused or, you know, real or fictitious supporters within Yugoslavia. They, the like, accused Stalinists? Is that what you're saying? Yes. The, the accused Stalinists in Yugoslavia. Were, were, t- were deemed uh, common formists. Okay. So, so they, uh, they were imprisoned, executed, or exiled by the thousands. Ooh. Um, and that was the thing where you go like, oh, yeah, you know, Stalin probably could... You know, throw a lot of money, somebody, you know, whatever. Well, you know, y'all. The long arm of Moscow. But. So Yugoslavia executed the Stalinists. Yeah, they did have a place called Devil's Island, which was a, a, a prison where. Okay. I don't, I had only heard of there being hundreds, which considering is not terrible of people imprisoned. Uh, but a lot of people executed there, so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, um, it was, it's definitely the dark side. They only side. keep a hundred like, I'm, 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 I'm not trying to, like, make this guy sound good at all. If you're at a geopolitics at any level, you're a fucking murderer. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, it seems like uh, he was able to not get buried in the paranoia he should have had. That Stalin. Considering that Stalin had yeah. his fingers deep. Sure, 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 same sure. same I mean, as Castro, I mean, too, I mean, in, in all fairness. I, but, I see what you're saying, but it is, it's never a good look to be executing thousands of people. No, 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 no. Um, not this. Not this no, 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 I, I didn't say thousands. Oh. They were imprisoned, executed, and exiled by the thousands. Oh, okay. So that's. Uh, at least a thousand. They killed still. Dave, they let the rest go. One historian put the number of prosecuted at fifty-one thousand. Okay, that's so fine. that's that's a lot. I take it back. Everything I said. <laughs> uh, special prison camps for male and female common formists were constructed on on barren Adriatic islands that year. Probably a fucking lovely place to be. Yeah, and they separated the men and the women. Um, pretty good time for the. Yeah, bros. I would imagine. I would imagine so. I'm sorry, I can't fulfill any fantasies there. Um, well, I'll take care of it. You can next week on the Patreon. <laughs> so now, in other Eastern Bloc communist states, instead of them having, they they had Titoists that they were purging. In, okay, gotcha. In other Eastern Bloc, because so after they split at the at the end of uh, the 40s, um, you could not see a Soviet film in a theater in Yugoslavia. Uh, you didn't want the American stuff, so he he brought in Mexican movies, like I told you guys. Right, oh. I remember you talking about that. Which is too bad. There's a lot of good, uh, you know, you know, Soviet films being made. A lot of good Mexican movies, man. Right, Santo that's true. versus Dracula. But it was also a thing that it was convenient because a lot of the films uh, in the golden age of Mexican cinema were they glorified the Mexican Revolution. Yes. So oh, it was cool. it was this you know this great thing. It's oh, a narrative. They, yeah, it that's yeah it plugs right in. Um, that was enough of a revolutionary message to make them permissible under communism. Some Yugoslavs likened the war waged by the partisans to the guerrillas in the Mexican Revolution. From the 1950s, 60s, everything Mexican was cutting at the cutting edge of cool in Yugoslavia. Many musicians were wearing sombreros and performing Mexican music, singing in Serbo-Croatian or Spanish. This fascination basically cooled out in the 1970s. But Play the drop. Yeah, I mean... Drop it's the, that needle, man. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. We, this, well, what was the 60s hottest... You go Menudo. You can. Oh, I mean, uh, yo, uh, you can hit up. Uh, don't interrupt this podcast, obviously, but you can hit up uh, Umex playlists on on Spotify. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, I That's listened so to a bunch cool. the other day. It was it's awesome. Tight? That was sick. Yeah. Well, I know that in Mexico, but you, there's do, like... you do hear Mexican music with like Serbian lyrics, or whatever, and you, it's it's wild. Wow. Yeah. It's there like... is there. I know that in in Mexico, there's like conjunto music, which is like mm-hmm. Mexican polka. Mm-hmm. Because there a lot of Polish people there, and the accordion. And the accordion is like, yeah, fucking huge. Yeah, accordion is king. Yeah, I mean, fucking, fucking, I mean, with Flaco, uh, Estrano Al. <laughs> so because That's he was, weird Al, because he was well, breaking, the Flaco Amanda is this the Mexican accordion. Because he's breaking with the Soviets, um, it was he was pushed to find like a kind of new model of of socialism for Yugoslavia. And um, he was not a, a big fucking theory guy. Oh, you don't say. So he, the, he, the guy who flunked in second grade? So he went to one of his lieutenants uh, uh, to hammer out the ideology, Edward Cardelge, who we met in the first episode. Mm, yes. And um, Tito wholeheartedly supported the idea of workers' management of production and formed the first workers' councils in 1950s. Central agencies were downsized. Tito and Milovan Diaz wrote a bill about socialist self-management, introducing profit sharing and workplace democracy in previously state-run industries. The employers became the direct owners. 
Tito's government began permitting Yugoslav workers to seek employment in Western Europe, especially West Germany, as guest workers. With this exposure to Western democracies, a lot of Yugoslavs started seeing themselves as culturally closer to Western Europe. Mm. Yugoslavia's exports of industrial products, heavy machinery, transportation machines, and military technology and equipment started rising 11% every year. Dan, Holy let's shit. not forget the Yugo. Yeah, you can't. I mean, the car. How can I? 1952. Uh, he's now 60. Evo Krajicic Stevo, the, he, the head Sorry. of... Oh, Evo Krajicic Stevo? Okay. The head of the Communist Secret Police, Ozna, said of Tito's girlfriend, Yovanka, quote, one day in 1952, she told Zora, his wife, that she would marry Tito. We were both as dumbfounded as she was when she told us that our brother had died. As if she had told us that she would marry St. Peter or that she will marry the Lord God. Yovanka did become the first lady of Yugoslavia, marrying Tito in a small secret ceremony, April 15th, 1952. The groom was 60. The bride was 28. Oh, boy. 1953, on the 13th of January, the parliament established that the law of socialist self-management would be the basis of the entire country's social order. Tito succeeded even Rybar as the Wait, wait, I'm sorry. The law of social self-management, you said? Yes. What is, what is that law? What, I think what you described earlier about the structure of companies that were okay. formerly state-run would all be run democratically by the workers. Yeah. Okay, okay. As and, opposed and, to the state. And so it's a thing where it's like... It's more communism than communism. It, it kind yeah, of is. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like... It's a, and also, um, they're going to be open to, to Western investment. So you're going to have Western money coming in to, to get stuff that is then distributed on a very, uh, you know, kind of equal basis among the workers. It's, it's, it's real... Okay. It's kind of it is more real communism, yeah. like you know. Stalin is seventy four. He has a stroke on March the fifth, nineteen fifty three. Um, there was a theory put forth in a two thousand twelve book from Slovenian historian Jose Perevic that Tito had Stalin poisoned with potassium cyanide, and it was like that he basically did have one killer sent to Moscow yeah. and didn't have to send a second. Uh, that's you know probably. Doesn't seem to, I mean, he, he made it like, that probably, far without having to do that. Why? <laughs> He's old. Yeah. Th- this idea is based paranoid. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's it's based mostly on circumstantial evidence from some former it, Yugoslav it's archives. It's cool to talk about. Yeah, it's better than that yeah. evidence. After Stalin's death, the USSR leadership invited Tito t- to visit and discuss normalizing relations between their two nations, but he declined. Um Nah, I'm good. <laughs> by 1953, Yugoslavia had formed an informal association with NATO via a pact with Greece and Turkey that included a provision for mutual defense. Tito made a visit to Ethiopia in 1953, and Emperor Haile Selassie returned the favor the following year. Tito wanted to send Yugoslav college graduates to Ethiopia because the Yugoslavia's universities weren't up to Western standards, and graduates had a hard time getting hired abroad. Ethiopia hardly had a healthcare system or a university system, so they gladly accepted Yugoslavian professionals to work in the empire. Interesting. So it's this thing of like second world, you know, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. whatever. Hmm, I, wa- I, I, I wonder what the equation was that helped them become more western what was going on in ethiopia at the time no that that was helping them export their workers to yeah. places of employ yeah right where they, where they they couldn't in the west oh okay yeah oh because they couldn't go to the west i'm right. sorry okay like, right or they, could, they couldn't afford the workers of yes. the west yeah yeah okay. um I see or uh, you know ethiopia ethiopia couldn't afford the workers of the west yugoslavia couldn't work in the, in the west. west so there was this Meeting of yeah. the so that's kind of a thing that's going to play out in 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 the future for him. It's like when you go to Mexico to get a tooth pulled. Yeah. Oh, that's actually very good. That makes total sense. Um, I guess in 1954, <laughs> 1954, Yugoslavia and Tito faced a serious choice: either continue their course westward and give up the one-party dictatorship they'd relied on since the war, or seek a reconciliation with the new Soviet leadership. Milovan Diaz promoted going west for a time, but Tito rejected the idea. Tito would not abandon his dictatorship nor his Soviet ties. 1955, Nikita Khrushchev made a state visit to Belgrade and personally apologized for Stalin's repeated assassination oh, attempts. Shit. Yeah. He said, quote, You did well in protecting yourself. You had good guards and good informants who informed you about everything Stalin was planning for you. Tito replied, quote, Stalin knew that I was very well guarded. After very many warnings that it was enough sending assassins, he evidently got a bit scared. Well, he did he get did. scared of at the end. Like, how many times did he hide in that bunker thinking everybody was going to kill him? Now in Elder States. It's all the sliding. And it. also, just it's worth noting that Nikita Khrushchev is very much like Tito. 
in that he was a fucking peasant. Yeah. And and worked his way. And a war hero. Yeah. And a war hero. Yeah. And so it makes, I mean, and that's, I mean, Stalin was fucking from Georgia, peasant anyway, as well, but you get the feeling that, that Khrushchev and, and Tito probably saw him, had a similar worldview. Yeah. Yeah. So T- Tito is now an elder statesman, and he's negotiating with President Nasser of Egypt and President Nehru of India in June of 56, leading to closer cooperation among states that weren't engaged in East-West conflict. From non-engagement involved the concept of active non-alignment, actively promoting an alternative to block politics as opposed to simple neutrality. From October to November, the Hungarian people attempted a revolution. They were rejecting the Hungarian People's Republic and their subordination to the USSR. Soviet tanks and troops crushed the uprising on November 4th. Ah. Almost a quarter of a million Hungarians fled the country and thousands were killed. In November, Milovan Diaz gave a statement to the French press condemning Soviet intervention in Hungary. He was arrested in November. This is like his number two, Tito's number two. So this means Tito's arresting him. Yeah. And sentenced to three years prison in Yugoslavia, which means Tito. What the what? Tito had to imprison uh, his buddy. Yeah. So that the Soviets don't take his words out on Tito's country. Could you, I, I don't. Milovan Diaz is basically the vice president. Right, of right, right. And, and and Tito arrested his vice president. Yes. For his own safety. For for the safety of the country. Well, I mean, was he saying that he acted without my orders, or was he what covering was the, his ass? The, yeah. What was the the? I think it was a thing where DS is is also like you know along with Cardell, it's like it's like these subordinates like they they're like again Tito's not the ideas guy. So he so he's so like he, he's uh, one of the architects of the country, but I think Tito you know he he wasn't. A fucking brutal dictator. So these guys could speak. Yeah. But once the the comments were being interpreted, Tito saw the writing on the wall, and he's like, "Well, they just crushed Hungary, right? And here I am over here, and they've been waiting for an excuse to invade me this whole time, right? So I better imprison this guy for three years. Okay. So he's kind of covering his ass. So okay. This guy made a move, and um, nineteen fifty seven, the Soviets launched a new campaign to blame Tito and the Yugoslavs for inspiring the Hungarian Revolution. Um, so this is like, you know, Khrushchev came in, he's like, why are we squandering this relationship with the Yugoslavs? And immediately that chilly relationship started right back up again, like it was with Stalin. Not on the murder level, but definitely on a, a cool... Uncomfortability. Mm. So why DS is in prison? He publishes a book called The New Class, an analysis of the communist system. Sends it to an American publisher. Yep. His work argued that communism in Soviet Union and Eastern Europe was not egalitarian, that it was establishing a new class of privileged party bureaucracy who enjoyed material benefits from their positions. His book was a great success, translated into 40 languages, and got him another seven years on his sentence. <laughs> but he was right. Yeah. That's yeah. what it sounds like. If you publish it, yeah. you're right, then but you it's, get seven it, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a thing, too, where it's like, um, Tito took over the old, the old palaces. Yeah, like Tito had. So he moved into that shit. Yeah, he had a he had a fucking he had a like a, a villa on one of the aisles in the Adriatic. He had thirty four villas in the entirety of Yugoslavia, and um, some had tunnels underneath and shit. Of no. well, oh, you, you tunnels! Have to, you have to have a tunnel. A wild ass shit. Yeah. I love tunnels. He's like, oh, all of a sudden he's like, and that, what was that thing that you said? Stalin would say like, the state wants my wife to wear to have a wear for a fur coat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's that sort of shit. But at least in the case of Tito, you know. There wasn't just you know like like I said like they kept the money in Circulate. in workers' hands. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but how much? You don't know when this when the skimming starts well, or you, ends. Well, I mean, the, but the skimming is happening. The skimming is happening here. Yeah. Also, when you redistribute all the land to the peasants and you've taken all this shit, you can be like, also, I'm taking like this, that, this. You know, I mean, like, I mean, the thing is, if you own Versailles. The upkeep for Versailles is just it's extravagant. Honestly, it's more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, uh, but that money is going. You're taking that money from feeding people. Yeah. 1958 to 1959, Tito and the Yugoslav delegation kicked off a three-month-long international boat trip to visit heads of state. <laughs> yeah. Pleasure cruise. <laughs> of prominent non-aligned nations. Aboard Tito's yacht, the peace cool. ship Gallup, he met with the leaders of Indonesia, India, Burma, um, Ceylon, which is Sri Lanka, mm-hmm. uh, Ethiopia, Sudan, Egypt, and Syria. The ship itself 
became an icon, a symbol of peace and cooperation amongst the non-aligned. Tito felt the yacht made his regime seem much more glamorous. Tito's reception yeah. in these states varied. Spending New Year's Eve on the island of Bali with yeah. in- Indonesian President Sukarno, who, by the way, is like fascist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's still a thing, too. Part of this non-alignment thing, Tito will work with any type of government yeah. to be like, okay, listen, we are this like kind of second world level country and we don't have any power. If we're, if we're together, this makes more sense. Right, right. right. No matter your views, that's, yeah. if we can coalesce into some sort of I thing. I don't care if you're Muslim. <laughs> Indonesia, the largest Muslim country in the world, fourth largest by population. That's right. Nobody ever talks about it. In Bali, uh, he was greeted with 100 barefoot maidens in sarongs. Oh, so was I. Offering silver bowls filled with flowers to the two presidents. They spent the evening ringing in the New Year, enjoying food, music, and champagne at Sukarno's palace. Oh, uh, Sukarno! Women were said. To, women were said to splash naked in Roman-style baths beneath the president's windows, oh. and dancers entertained party guests on the palace lawn. At midnight, Tito and Sukarno embraced and kissed, and the party oh continued God. through the night until the dawn, or at around seven a.m. <sighs> woke up, woke up in each other's beds. Hey. I'm a communist. You're a fascist. We're all chopped up. Oh, God. These girls are naked. My, yeah. di- my dick's soft. How about you, pal? <laughs> my girlfriend invented squirting. <laughs> yeah. I might as well kiss you. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not all Indonesians would set- celebrate his arrival. Tito's visits to Asia had angered some communist circles in the Eastern world who often saw Yugoslavia's model of socialism as heretical to Marxism. Some local Indonesian communists went as far as to denounce Tito as an imperialist carrying out a mission trip for the West. His stop at Burma, which is Myanmar, was less well-received, whereas crowds in Burma's larger city, Yangon, had cheered on Tito's name only four years earlier under the leadership of his ally, Premier Unu. The country's new regime under President J. Nguyen, General Nguyen, had clearly made efforts to downplay his arrival and prevent crowds from turning out to welcome him. At the time of Tito's arrival, Burma was fighting a border dispute with China. Nguyen hoped to avoid provoking China further by being overly welcoming to the controversial Yugoslavian president, whose China press had derided as, quote, a running dog of imperialism. Oh. The Burmese leader treated Tito to an obligatory round of meetings and dinners, after which Tito cut the trip short and returned to Yugoslavia. We're the barefoot maidens. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if, if, if the party doesn't want you. If we're not kissing, them, yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah, I just had such a good time. Yeah. <laughs> um, by all metrics, Sucks. in 1960, Yugoslavia was booming. Their economic growth was second only to Japan. Shit. The uh, Yugoslavians enjoyed far more political and social liberties than the folks in the USSR and other Eastern Bloc countries. Literacy had been dramatically increased, and medical care was almost entirely free of charge. Life expectancy was 72 years old. Fuck. Hmm. Tito sponsored the first meeting of non-aligned states in Belgrade in 61. The non-alignment identity would change by the end of Tito's life. New member states were like Cuba were unmistakably anti-Western. Um, Tito began purging Serbian centralists like Alexander Rankovic in 1966. That was the year that more than 3,700 Yugoslavs fled to Trieste, Italy, seeking political asylum in North America, the UK, or Australia. What year is this? That 66. is 66. Got it. In the summer of 68, Yugoslavia was one of many nations around the world grappling with student demonstrations. On June 2nd, protests by university students led to wider mass youth protests in capital cities all over the country. They had to go protest in Ethiopia because yeah, nobody yeah. would take... <laughs> What, what, what were they pro? What was the just on um, just bad tuition? It was conditions. like Vietnam is in the throw of it. It's like it's yeah. a, there was a huge student worldwide protest around sixty eight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in yeah, every corner of the world, mm-hmm. okay. it was massive. Um, Tito gave a speech though on the ninth, and the protest died down in less than a week. Um, Take it easy, guys. <laughs> I think he just still had some clout. Yeah. You know, like please stop protesting. <laughs> I think also like <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You go like, I won't ask again. <laughs> you, you, I mean, you, you can't say like, it's right in kind of a sweet spot, isn't it? Where it's open to Western mm-hmm. stuff and it's and it's just Eastern enough yeah. in, in the com- like. Oh no! It's 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 plus right plus in the line, plus also nicely. if your economy is doing well, you you get away yeah, with sure, a lot. Sure. So, um. In the 1960s, the USSR uh, saw new campaigns against Tito, and they blamed the Yugoslavs for inspiring insurgents uh, in uh, also uh, Czechoslovakia in the Prague Spring, um, which is like a you know another student protest kind of thing that was going on. And um, 
that, that was another one. The Soviets pushed, you know, broke down real hard. And um, the Yugoslav-Soviet relations were, were, again, very, very chilly because they were like, oh, this is Titoism. This is, you know. Uh, you know, the stuff that's working. <laughs> 71 Not for you. 71 to 72 um Tito purged some of the liberal leaders in Yugoslavia that were calling for decentralization in Croatia and Serbia and um the Croatian purge had the nasty side effect of destabilizing Tito's rule in the republic with the most industry. I mean there's a there's been the use of purge uh has happened uh many times now. Mm. So it seems problematic. Uh yeah, I mean that's um, it's a very sad. I don't I don't know if it's if it's um, just purge from office or or purge from life. <laughs> yeah, eh, you're pardoned from yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been found not guilty of life. Um, so for for, for many years, Tito was spending his summers at the seaside residence in the Adriatic, which you know, like I said, um, he he worked in the in the the, the shipyards there, and he loved it. Him and the First Lady entertain heads of state and celebrities like Queen Elizabeth, um, Sophia Loren. Oh, yeah, uh, I saw some pictures of them. El- Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. <laughs> he loved the actors. Burton wrote about Tito and Yovanka in his diaries. Quote, I'm drunk. <laughs> they live in remarkable luxury, unmatched by anything else I've seen. And I can well believe Princess Margaret, who says the whole business makes Buckhouse look pretty middle class. <laughs> Buckhouse... <laughs> Margaret had a great way with words. <laughs> Buckhouse. <laughs> the whole business makes buck- it look like an outhouse in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Buckingham Palace, my bull. <laughs> in 1971, Tito was in a meeting with Nixon in the White House, surrounded by journalists and photographers. And not just journalists and photographers, also a lot of <laughs> tape recorders. <laughs> He lit up a Cuban cigar, thumbing his nose at the White House no smoking policy and their trade embargo on Cuba. Oh, quote, Mr. President, we do not smoke here in the White House, said an astonished Nixon. Tito laughed and said, lucky you. (laughs) Dude, I hear Arnold saying that. Lucky (laughs) you. Lucy. Better than sitting in the White House jacuzzi, lighting up one of my stogies. When my pig comes in. (laughs) Of course, I'm lighting up a stogie. Yeah. Of course, I'm seeing the January 6th riots. I was smoking my stogie in my 40 foot by 40 foot jacuzzi and watching <laughs> January 6th happen. It's 10 in the morning. I'm lighting up. Gotta get stogie. the Patreon for that, folks. <laughs> really depressed. 1973. Tito is now 81. Wow. It's old. Uh, Richard Burton portrays Tito in the 1973 Yugoslav film Ball- Battle of Sitjeska, also known as the Fifth Offensive. It tells the battle of the story uh, of the story of the Battle of Sitjeska in 43, the greatest engagement of the Yugoslav partisan. War. It was one of the most expensive Yugoslav films ever produced and se- se- selected as the Yugoslav entry for the best foreign language film at the Academy Awards. Hey. It was not accepted as a nom- nominee. Aww. It did win a special award at the Moscow International Film Festival. Worst film. <laughs> 1974, Tito responded to the 1960s crises by creating a new system of symmetrical federalism with rules and rituals to achieve equality among the six republics and Serbia's two autonomous provinces, huh. Kosovo and Vojvodina. Um, Yugoslavia's 1974 constitution set the new system into law. It ended up promoting the weaker and smaller federal units at the expense of Serbia and Croatia. Serbia was pissed off at its, uh, its autonomous provinces getting independent roles and that minorities like the Albanians and Kosovo were getting recognition. This resentment paved the way for warlords like Slobodan Milosevic to take power later on. Wow, okay. In uh, 1975, Tito moved out of the common home he shared with Yovanka. The First Lady. Uh, Yugoslavia in 1977 celebrated Tito's 85th birthday in May with massive celebrations. He traveled throughout the year, visiting Libya, the USSR, North Korea, and China. Good guys. After yeah. 20 years of the CACP de- demanding, denouncing Yugoslavia as revisionists in the pay of capitalism, the two countries were making peace. Tito next toured France, Portugal, and Algeria. His doctors advised that he rest after this tour. 1979. Uh-oh. Tito's health is in rapid decline by the end of the 70s, mostly because of an arterial embolism in his left leg, a side effect oh. of diabetes, which he'd had for years. Oh, oh, yeah. living large. Yep. He took part in the Havana Conference for the Non Alive Movement in 1979. There was a New Year's Eve party televised from his re- residence, and Tito remained seated with throughout the broadcast, which concerned the watching nation. He usually dances. He's usually chopped to the gills, yeah. and he's just sitting there. Yeah. 
In January, Tito's medical team attempted an arterial bypass. The operation was unsuccessful, and Tito's left leg was amputated. Oh, uh, that's one way to bypass it. To prevent the spread of gangrene. Dude, you can't get... If you're a head of state and no, you get you, gangrene, your state has failed. After the amputation, his health started improving. By the end huh? of February... It took a turn for the worse. Oh. He suffered from kidney failure, and his lungs and heart began to also fail. In late April, while recovering in hospital, he also suffered a stroke. Jesus Christ, that's not recovery. Oh, it was Stalin. Yosef yeah. Rose Tito died from gangrene complications in a small hospital room May 4th, 1980 at 3.05 p.m. He was three days shy of his 88th birthday. Gangrene got him? The head of state, the leader of the country died of gangrene. The hospital put up an inscription in the hallway that read, It wasn't us. (laughs) 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 Uh, What did it say? For for reals. I'm trying to understand what it it means. (laughs) I swear to God. I I think it means what Eric I I swear to God. A meteor. Anything uh, can happen in life. uh, Sputnik (laughs) fell out of the sky. It was the long arm of Moscow. It was 20 gr- years late, I swear to God. It was well, the Green Gang. The green. It had nothing to do with the stinking, festering <laughs> stump next to his testicles <laughs> that we let go. Oh, no, this is, okay, so this is pretty sweet. This is, so the hospital put up an inscription in the hallway that read, quote, the fight for people's liberation will be a long one, <laughs> but would have been longer if Tito never lived. Um... It's it will li- be longer now that he is dead, li- which again was not us. <laughs> Yovanka did not see Tito between 77 and 80. After Tito's death, all of Yovanka's property was seized by the government. Oh, my God. And she was moved to a state-owned villa, which was basically house arrest. Yovanka died in 2013. Holy Jesus, shit. fuck. Yeah. What an arrest. Zarko, in a villa. Zarko, Zarko passed away in Belgrade in Serbia in 1995 at the age of 71. Misho was a Croatian diplomat and is now retired until the president, uh, until the present day. People in what was once wow. Yugoslavia still gather on May 25th to celebrate all things Tito. Oh, shit. And Laura did give us a great list of uh, um, uh, sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, Which we will ignore. We, we will. I mean, <laughs> I can say them or, or there's a big list. I can just forward it to you. I don't know what you want to do. Should we post it? or I'll just put it in the description. Yeah. Okay. Um, she, she really pulled from a lot of stuff here. Thank um, you, Laura. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Laura. But yeah, they said basically still the statue did take on some kind of uh, religious I- iconography um, and people people really uh, had a, a huge emotional connection to him. Right. Um, like I said, you know, obviously a guy that uh, definitely had, had, had blood on his hands quite considerably, but mm-hmm. um, just deftly managing, especially to... Warring nuclear blocks in the middle. Um, it, yeah, it, that's it, something that we we really really didn't touch on in the episodes. Is that this is Cold War shit? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, after it, two it, world wars, and then there's just this like, oh, everybody's got nukes pointed at each other. Yeah, it's basically the history of the the entire century. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Like it's all he goes there. through all of that. Every huge thing that happens, he's. Yeah. He's there. Nearby, at least, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, some presidents tried to curry favor with him, and, like, they said something like, I think it was maybe Truman or something. It was like a... The haberdasher from St. Louis? was like, you're a, you're a communist, but you're my kind of communist, and... and uh, you're not gay, are you? <laughs> Tito very quickly pointed out, like, nah, man, I am not down with what you're doing at all. Yeah. Like, he was like... He was like, uh, I'm your nothing. I- I'm still yeah. very much doing my own thing. Please and, stop calling me. <laughs> and he, he was... um. You know, uh, I mean, it must have been fascinating to the Western governments to look at this guy and be like, this motherfucker is not with us at all. He's doing And it. he's really standing up to Stalin, who's the craziest murderer of all time. Uh, yeah, yeah. And he's getting away with it. Hold on, Adolf Hitler's calling. <laughs> he had something to say. Yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, I imagine they had some they had some theories about it. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I sometimes feel very cynical about, you know, people... Think they go, like the American government? Do they are they going? Oh, Castro's a genius. Are they going? This wily guy keeps getting lucky, you know. And so, like, are, are they thinking that that Tito is? Oh, they just know brilliant that, some they, way. They just or, know that it's 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 uh it's it's the country's loyalty, right? They totally know that. I mean, yeah. the same way the U.S. knew 
That was what was stopping Khrushchev. I mean, Khrushchev saying it to him face to face is crazy. Sorry, we tried to kill you all those times, man. That was fucked up. Remember that? Well, also, that's good diplomacy. Yeah. You know, that's Remember what... that Max Castro guy? It yeah. wasn't yeah. us. Yeah. Max Castro. Never even heard the name. You guys should use that. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, I, I, I'm... I'm uh, 25, at least 25 assassination attempts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that we know. You know. <sighs> but yeah, I mean, incredible, fascinating, fascinating individual. I mean, how many... By the When he was in charge, there was... Uh, how many American presidents uh, or or presidential candidates were shot and killed oh, or, yeah, or yeah. shot? Well, we do it better. Yeah, we don't yeah, need yeah, us yeah. in twenty five. Yeah, exactly. Like, no yeah. communist bullshit. We'll pay one really good guy yeah. to do it. Yeah. Brainwash him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Max Castro. Um, I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, like the um, like how prevalent was the cult of personality around around him in you. Like, you know, when you see pictures or art from the old Soviet Union, mm-hmm. you see these incredible, like, busts and posters of Stalin and, like, Lenin. Yeah. You, that art is iconic. Yeah. Right? And it was omnipresent. It was everywhere. Yeah. Did you see that kind of cult of personality uh, yeah. reflected in, in, like, everyday fucking billboards and shit uh, with him? I don't know how much of that there was. I think um, there was, it, it wasn't so over the top, really. Uh, didn't have to be. It didn't have to be. And, um, you know, like there'd be the statues and stuff like that. And then also the war memorials. I mean, that's the thing, too, is that, like, people forget, like, the, you know, in, in, a, in a, what we would consider a much worse situation being the USSR, um, the way they could bank on the goodwill after the Second World War. I mean, fighting the Nazis yeah. is like the best goodwill you can get. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where you're like, you you draw such a firm like distinction. You get you get a, you a get, lot of leash after that. A lot. Sure. Man. Yeah. Yeah. After and then it's something you are responsible. Yeah. Yeah. In a very large way. Yeah. For for halting. Yeah. And Putin is still banking on it in those celebrations where they have like you know like oh, the. But yeah. well, they still talk. They yeah. You know, they say well, we're I bomb fighting. The, I bomb those Chechens and play. Yeah, they. Say, I mean, the the part of the the propaganda of the, out of uh, Russia today is that there are Nazis in Ukraine. I know, I know. It's really, really some wild shit. But really, that's this just president is Jewish. Yes. Yeah. Course. So of course, uh, well, of course, that's he's a terrible person. You, you have to. Oh, I know. The Jewish Nazis are the worst Nazis. I will say it's that. It's crazy yeah. how they can get to party, like get to power, and, get to, and, and well, and, it's crazy how they get to party. It's crazy how they get to party, and uh, and um, you know, just uh, ain't no party like a Jewish Nazi party. Mm-hmm. I I it's think just, I think terrible party. Um, yeah, his his estimate, you know, of of Khrushchev and all that stuff. When he saw the Hungarian Revolution being quashed in the Prague Spring and all that, he's also going like, oh, it's. It's always going to be like this. Yeah. Doesn't matter if it's Stalin. Yeah. Like this is how it's set up. They're and like, in a way, isn't that Trotskyism? <laughs> right, John? <laughs> no. Permanent revolution. No, no, no. They quashed okay. the revolution. Shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Also, you know, Khrushchev doesn't last that fucking long. Like Brezhnev is like right behind uh-huh. him. <coughs> um. So then you think about Tito, and you go like. Fuck that motherfucker was there like for, through all those guys for every yeah for the entire four decades is crazy yeah four decades with is a target nuts. on your back yeah in the most um, and keeping chaotic your, international uh, like geopolitical time ever. and keeping your borders open and I think there might have been a thing there too where there was this aspect that the international people might uh, uh, international people <laughs> international uh, let's say uh, governments might have recognized. This is also the only guy that can keep that country together. Yeah. If he goes. If he goes, and then and it immediately did. Even under, so like, it's, it's interesting too, like under the occupation of the Axis, the Axis is going, ooh boy, they're racist. <laughs> and they hate each other. Oh yeah, yeah. I like that. These are all kind of commies. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they go like, meanwhile, we look down on all of them, yeah. but we will definitely use their bigotry towards each other to, to have them just, you know, decimate whoever and, and prop up, a, a you know, th- something like the Eustacia. Um, but, yeah, they, they you know, even even when they adopted in their puppet, you know, governments and, and, and armies, locals from there, the partisans still were like, 
just dusting them, you yeah. know? Um, I mean, the first liberated, like, occupied territory was Yugoslavia under Tito, you know? He really didn't need uh, the Red Army at all. He got help from the West first, mm -hmm. you know? Um, Churchill met him, and Churchill was just like... Churchill, Churchill also was personally, like, vehemently anti-communist. Yeah. But he was just like... The Western, like, were like, they were like, this guy's running the show, man. Like, he's, he's, he's fighting these guys off. And, like, these other fucking uh, royalists that were hosting in, 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 in London, these fucking guys are all corrupt as shit. Yeah. And, um, you know, so we, we have to recognize this guy. He's the only guy doing a real fight. Right? Yeah, yeah. And he's in a primo location for you being able to go and attack. Yes, areas, it's from all different areas. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so I didn't really talk about the one of the things was when they were advancing one of the big controversies was that uh they the ustasha are like oh shit we're losing okay okie dokie what do we do here mm -mm 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 -mm. quick quick bing bang, bang bang boom oh if we go over to austria the brits are there we'll surrender to them they're good chaps yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. but like the allies had this thing where they were like to not fight over the bones of their enemies they were like you got to surrender to whoever you fought. Yeah, there you go. That was like a rule. And yeah. so... Pussy. So, they, so, so they, <laughs> they were turned around at uh, Bleiburg by by the, the Brits. Sorry. And, and they're like... And, the, and then, the, and then the, the... Austria is closed today. <laughs> and so the uh, Yugoslavian Liberation Forces like just like death marched them back. And it was... Uh, so that was like some pretty brutal stuff. Apparently, the Brits turned it off when they were like, oh, they're slaughtering them even though they should... They're surrendering and stuff. But... Again, well, we didn't see that. Again, again, the the crimes of the Ustasha in particular were so brutal that you can see somebody like really like wanting to give it back to them because they, yeah. I mean, they really, course, yeah. they really. Think about the war crimes you hear about today. Mm -hmm. Where like your TikTok, your Facebook, your MySpace, your Friendster. Mm -hmm. All of that shit. You're he you hear horrible, horrible shit. That happens in modern war. Now imagine nobody knows what the fuck you're doing. You're out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. The fucking type, the type of atrocities. Well, it's all the same shit, but yeah, no apparently, one knows you're doing it. Apparently, yeah. apparently so that you do it more. Yeah. But like I said, you do. Apparently, Tito, Tito was hardcore against it. He was like, uh, he was like, absolutely. If they're retreating, search for surrender. Well, he's probably been in you know plenty of armies that have retreated. Well, or or just, but he's also going like viewing well, them as bargaining no, chips, yeah, yeah. you know, just yeah. prisoners. Yeah. You know. Alive prisoners worth yeah. more than a dead one. Yeah, yeah. And then also, you know, the bad will it creates. Yeah. Among everyone. Yeah, you make more enemies. Yeah, including your allies, which mm -hmm. the Brits are going like, oh, if the Yugoslavs are going to execute them all, then we will we will keep keep them here, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, also in that dust up, they they did get some land grabs too. Like they they there was some. You know, uh, Italian areas bordering uh, Yugoslavia that they were that were in dispute since the First World War, uh -huh. and Tito was like, "That's fucking ours, dude. We're, we're grabbing that." Like they 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 also were one of those countries that like weirdly made out to expand mm, nice. at the end of the war because also it was you know it's relatable to the victor go the spoils kind hey. of shit you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, yo, fascinating, fascinating guy. Um, it's crazy how the West. Is I mean, completely like, oblivious to him? But well, no, not, I mean, not me anymore. Well, <laughs> well I mean, it's, in his day, it was like he was a fucking celebrity. Like Sophia Loren and fucking Elizabeth Taylor and the Queen of England are all going over? What the fuck is going on? Well, I guess, you know, he's a head of state and he's got an interesting and story. And it's a beautiful and, place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See pictures of Croatia. Yeah. Oh, Come on. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, yeah, fascinating, fascinating shit. Um, I, I loved, loved learning about the guy. I, I, I do think, you know, the, the first... You know, the take I had was he did just dance through the whole thing, mm -hmm. you know, like and um, especially those those um, those purge times in Moscow were, to, to, to be able to navigate that, because that is like basically being locked in a room with a psycho and talking your way out of it. Right. Yeah. Right. That's essentially what's going on. Yeah. Playing your chess, playing chess your way out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 fucking crazy. Um, and. Especially for how much Stalin would hate him and try to kill him later, it's amazing that you know he 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 avoided 
you know, Stalin just turning his gaze to him and being like, fuck this guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, while he was in Moscow. Because he was in Moscow a lot, you know. And they'll get you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And rhythm is going to get you. So, gentlemen, that's the story of, of Tito. You like that fucking shit? I like it a lot. And I wonder, you know, like, you don't, I'm going to speak for myself. I think I'm speaking for all of us. Like, I don't teach you that shit in school. No, no, no. Like, you don't and I wonder if, like, do they not teach you about guys like Tito? I mean, maybe he's not as significant as, as somebody that needs to be taught up through elementary and high school. Maybe, maybe there's an argument to be made that you don't. You, that's someone you learn about in college. Like maybe there's that argument. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You gotta you gotta learn about Hitler. You gotta learn about Stalin in high school. Sure. Right? Mm -hmm. But you think they don't talk about him here because he kind of made it work? I mean, that was my, that was the reason why almost this show started. Is it started with my dad telling me about guys like this, where he's like, you know, this guy was a motherfucker and people didn't really like him and he pissed off a lot, and I would be like eating it up. You right. know what I mean? And this yeah. guy made he had his own guy. Yeah. You know, he made his, a communist state work. Yeah. They're not going to tell you that no. in American public school. No, I mean, you we, do the Pledge of Allegiance. We can get into a whole conversation about the who makes the books. Oh, uh, right. Ghislaine Maxwell's dad. Yeah. But yeah, there was a thing where, you know, a bunch of, you know, Yugoslavian people years after would be like, oh, yeah, it was way better when Tito was in charge, you know? Um, and not just because of, you know, the the crippling wars. And all that. Just, <laughs> I think because of, like, general way of life, yeah. you know? Yeah, people still say that here, you know? And, like, the, you know, like so we had that thing where there was, like, what they said, like, maybe, like, 4,000 people, like, seeking, like, political asylum. But, like, that was it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, like I said, borders were free. You can go to you can go to Western countries. Like, it's, it. it's not locked down. Back. It's not, like, you know... Um, the Eastern Bloc, where it's like you're gonna get really fucking looked over, right. you know what I mean? Like it's like, and 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 like I said, especially for it being a smaller country, and and you and you would assume almost every side would want to kill you, right? Internationally, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. <coughs> it's uh, it's pretty wild that he was, he was able to have such a a liberal yet communist country with open borders and and um foreign investment right and then that's, um, i mean that's and then he's like and then he's pursuing this active path of courting other countries to be like i want you to say fuck you to both of these people the way i am yeah that's nuts mm -hmm. yeah and like because now you're going like we're the b squad we know it but we are tight yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but you would also be like that would put more of a target on his back because they still want to woo Suharno. right they still want to move like woo nehru and, right. and, and Haley selassie and all yeah. these people you know what i mean and he's going like, no, 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 no. They're with me now. Yeah. You know? So in this way. I mean, if they had oil, it'd be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, All right. As non-oil having countries. <laughs> Nobody's going to come and get us. <laughs> Rhythm is going to get us. <laughs> it's Rhythm of the night. And it's... Tonight. Tonight. Tonight, daddy. And that's the Miami sound machine. Uh -huh. <laughs> Should we fuck off, fellas? Sure. That was great, John. Fantastic. Yeah, Never man. heard of the guy. Now I think I really know him. Thank you, Laura. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Laura Crawford, of course. Brilliant. Thank you, um, Carl Marx, of course. Yep. Yep. You probably want to thank the Romani people. So. Nope. No. I do. I do. Oh, hey, you yeah. gave me I No, I do. I do. Um, That's I, good. I do. <laughs> That's yeah, good. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's just the put Jews. Them all, put them ahead. Yeah. The Jews, the gays. Gays. Mm -hmm. Love them. The mentally challenged. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. I want to thank everybody you're, 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 who was persecuted yep. through time. Okay. And nobody else. That's good. All right. Gentlemen, I love you both. Love you too. Love you too. I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Good night, everybody. We love you. Bye.